there's no bitterness in me. If, if anything, I have self reflection and say, man, if I could have just slowed down and took my time and mm -hmm. realized each of them, God put them, appointed them in that season for that day and gave me the opportunity to steward discipling them and using the avenue of church planning to disciple them to be more like him, wow. to love him, to know him. Family, multiplication, restoration. I'm Dahadi Lewis. Join me, Noah Odom and Hayden Radden, as we come to you from Atlanta, St. Louis, and Las Vegas, as we seek to add value to your church planning journey. We'll have real-time, authentic conversations that are relevant to the life of the church planner and pastor. Join us as we hear from leaders of this movement from across North America and discover what it really takes to plant churches everywhere for everyone. The world tells us our differences should divide us, but the gospel, it has a different story. Our mission, our calling, His command is a mission that unites every Christ follower in a way that stands out, a way that doesn't make sense to the world. Join us. June 13th and 14th at SEND Conference to be refreshed and celebrate the church together on mission. A free event hosted by the International Mission Board and North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Learn more at SENDConference.com. Welcome back to the We Are Send Network podcast. My name is Hayden Ratner from Walk Church here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Not the city of sin, but the city of him. Come on, somebody. And of course, joined always by Pastor Noah Oldham, lead pastor of August Gate Church in the Lou, St. Louis. And uh, today we have a special guest, my guy, Pastor Josh What's up? Carter. Thanks, man. Coming to Glad us to here. here also in Las Vegas, Nevada. Recently stepped on staff with the Send Network here in the city, but coming out of a intense, wild, roller coaster, awesome, challenging church planting journey in PDX, Portland, Oregon, home of Damian Lillard. The home. The Mello. Mello. Shout out to Mello. And man, <laughs> you just, uh, you and your wife, Amy, your four kids, you guys planted Remedy City Church yeah. uh, over the past seven years in Portland. I love that you're a practitioner. You're an experienced church planter. Uh, you're a leader of leaders. And, and you've recently stepped out of that role as lead planter uh, to join the Send Network team here in Las Vegas. That was a big decision, and uh, we believe God's going to honor it. But we thought it would be w valuable to have you on the podcast here today uh, to really just hear some of your story and learn some principles that you learned mm -hmm. along those past seven years of planting in Portland. Let's just talk about that. Let's hear a little bit from you. What are some of the things coming out of this past church planting stent that God taught you that you would think other planters listening to this or team members, or just pastors thinking about planting or sending a church. Mm -hmm. What are some things that the Lord was teaching you throughout your journey? Yeah, I mean, just that list that, by the way, thanks for having me today. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. honored to be here on the podcast. Oh, man. Come on. So I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I think um, just the list you were saying, good, hard, you know, great, not so great, just that that whole description of planting wore me out just you talking about it <laughs> yeah and um and so mm. i just think you know for me um coming into this new role leaving something that we loved um you know I, i've been able to start processing a little bit in fact i'm i'm actually seeing a, a counselor to help me process good just what it's like to come off the field um planting a church and um you know there's a lot to learn um there's a lot i can say in a 20-minute podcast there's no way but i would say there's a couple of things that i would say one one would be is I underestimated the spiritual warfare that is church planting. Mm, wow. I think I completely underestimated it. And I think that not only underestimated it, I think that I I don't know that I was necessarily uh, equipped with the right tools. Wow. Uh, the weapons to fight the battles um, that church planting was going to throw at me. Um, and that, and that's something from somebody, again, I was telling you guys earlier, it, you know, from a guy that looks like I'm 12, you know, been in ministry full time for 19 years. Yeah. And so large churches, small churches, you know, and planting was like another world. Wow. Um, and I would say another s spiritual warfare world. So I just think that's the first thing is I underestimated the amount of spiritual warfare. And, and I want to mean by that too, is not only on the, ch on the, the work itself, but on me, mm. You know, um, like mm -hmm. dual layer warfare. There's a layer that's on the work. Yeah. And then there's a layer that's on you personally. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, you know, um, 
that Pastor Vance Pittman says really well, and, and he says it the best. He says that, you know, the work that God wants to do through you, he has to do in you. Right. And yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, right. Yeah. But but what I realized was planting was so much about for me it was much about uh, God dependence in my own life and God allowed the the avenue of of church planting allowed me to go into that to shape me. But it would also allowed spiritual warfare um, in my life um, to where it taught me to fight differently, mm. you know, um, that I don't think without planting I could have done at the same time when you're not battling that that war with the right weapons it can really do a lot of damage and i think we've got a lot of guys that come off the field like my you know say seven years like i'm in now that come off of really wounded because of it wow um mm -hmm. and so so i would say that would be number one is i, I just underestimated the amount of change that was going to happen in my life because of spiritual warfare the good and the bad and the ugly wow. you know um and uh i just didn't know that i think the second thing was um it kind of in tandem with that is the amount of spiritual warfare up on the team. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I think a lot of times we, especially for me, I moved from Tennessee, came to Las Vegas for a residency where we met you. Right. And then Portland and Portland, it was like three different cultures in a really short amount of time. But our team, a large part of our team was coming from East Tennessee and they're, they're transplanting into a place like Portland, Oregon, yeah, which East, is wow. East Tennessee wow. is not Portland, Oregon, bro. Like no. another, a completely different world. Right. Right. And so, um, almost so post-Christian it's pre-Christian. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so the, it's, it's, it's awesome to say we want to be missional. It's awesome to say we want to reach people for Jesus. We want to go on mission. And there, these people, these people were amazing. I mean, they sold homes, they give jobs away. They did, they did gave as much as I did sacrifice to move. But I think we all underestimated, you know, the lifestyle change it was going to have to take, the amount of demonic warfare, the stronghold in the city that we're going to have to go against. Wow. And so when God can't, I, what, I've, what I found out when, is when, when Satan can't, you know, when, when, when he can't get to you, he goes to your family. Yeah. When he can't get to your family, who does he go to? The closest people to you. And your as team. a planter, who's the closest people to you? Your team. Yeah. Your yeah. team. Wow. Right. And so that's why you see so much implosion from within. And so I just think the underestimating the warfare side of it not only impacted my own life, but also impacted our team. And I think in a lot of negative ways that actually played out later on to mm. actually hurt our team. Good, great people. I mean, even some people that I say I, I personally felt attacked um, by, um, I have no bitterness towards them, but I will say that the amount of vision that that that's just where that's where the evil one comes comes for i'm yeah. actually saddened by it yeah that makes yeah. sense i'm saddened yeah. by it because these were amazing people who are willing to sacrifice right and when we all didn't under we all didn't understand the amount of spiritual warfare that was going to come against us man that's so, real that that's i, I want just a second want to hit on that because what you're talking about in my mind all i'm picturing is this you know, this military mindset of hey we have a mission to do and we're all signing up to go and do this thing. But in the, in the military and you have that mission, it's temporary. And then you're coming home. It's small yeah. stints. And then you're coming home. Wow. But when you go wow. plant a church, it's like, we're going there and we're burning the ships and, and, and it's yep. new life. And so not only do you have this mission in front of you, that's very, very volatile. And, and mm. it's it, at any moment, things can blow up just the mission. Then you have just the regular thing of life. And all we got to do is read the book of Acts, read the, the letters to the churches and see like, the church is a mess. And so you put the two things together, wow. this this monumental mission, and then just the natural movements of the church. And bro, that's hard. That is yeah, really, so really difficult. hard, bro. Yeah, I think people, so people they underestimate that. Like this is not just a, a, a short-term mission trip. Can you get along with these folks for a couple of weeks in a, in a church bus? It's can you do life with the messiness while you're on mission, bro? It's heavy. You know, the unmet expectations. Ooh. You know, I think that's the thing is, is, you know, you as a planter, you have, there's a lot of unmet expectations. I mean, nobody goes out on the field and says, hey, we're going to launch slow, <laughs> you know, or we're going to launch low, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're going to launch yeah. low. We're going to, we're going to reach people. We're going to plant yeah. churches. Yeah. Like that's always, that's, uh, why, we're doing that's, all, that's yeah. why we're doing it. And yeah. I think that's our heartbeat of why we want to do it. Um, I think we underestimate though, again, the amount of spiritual warfare, that, which then plays into the unmet expectations from the team yeah. and from yourself. You don't meet your own expectations or what you thought, 
You know, even if your church grows fast, I've found, I found this out. Even if you're one of those that your church just grows really fast, you there there is still change and expectations on you as it grows fast that as right. you have to change. Yeah, there's different even different levels of, of warfare. Yeah, in that yeah, and totally and and so because if it goes fast, what team members do is they don't they're not as close to you as right. the planter anymore, right? Because yeah. it's expanding, yep. right? So they have unmet expectations, right? Right. So I think the, 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 the issue of unmet expectations because of everything happening um, causes a lot of division, you know, in a lot yeah. of teams, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you uh, you hit on this dynamic of having the right weapons for the right war mm-hmm. and how to how to be battle ready. And yeah. I think one thing that I'm getting from Pastor Josh and his journey is especially if you're thinking about planting, maybe you're in seminary right now and you're praying through next steps, church planning. If you're not ready for battle or if you're not interested in battle, yeah, right? This is the spoiler alert. This is the, the trailer for this journey. It's going to be filled with warfare, yeah. right? It's going to be filled with all this gangsta <laughs> um, planting. <laughs> and um, talk about that, Josh, because that's the thing that came to your heart when you think about your guy's journey. Yeah. What are the weapons that yeah. you need to be equipped, or maybe this could be deep, but maybe yeah. today yeah. you're looking at yourself seven years earlier, getting ready to move to Portland. Yeah. You just settled in. What are you telling yourself? What type of weapons are you give? What are you equipping yourself with, Amy with yeah. today? Yeah. Well, that's a great question because you you can't give what we know this. You can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't right? have. So we say we want to build a prayer. We, prayer is obviously right. like right. the weapon, right? right. Now, mm-hmm. we can say that on a podcast. We can say that from a stage. It's a lifestyle. Ah. And the lifestyle is something that you just don't get overnight. Hmm. And it's just not. And you can't go to a conference. I mean, you go to a prayer conference and you say, I'm going to do this best. I'm going to do this better. And what happens is you get back to the team. You get into the grind of planting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other things mm-hmm. take place, yeah. right? So, so I would say the lifestyle of a prayer, yeah, um, lifestyle of prayer, a, a lifestyle of it. Um, and uh, you know, for me, I think um, for for us, I, I think that was one thing that would allow me to slow down a little bit, mm-hmm. because as I'm as a planter, gun ho, got the prospectus, got the vision, let's go. I've got this team that's also transitioned. They're dealing with their own spiritual warfare. They're dealing with their own transition, their own, I call it detox, their own yeah. detox from their past culture. Mm. They're going through so much demonic. Right. I'm talking, it's like, we, I've got stories that, you know, are, are crazy about what people had to go through. But but we didn't have the the, the weapon of prayer to, in some ways, to slow down your heart, mm. to slow down your pace, mm. to wow. stop and say, wow. you know, we say this is God's thing, but we live and act a, a different way. So I would say prayer you know, a lifestyle of it, a strategy of it. I would probably put more strategy on that um, and slowing my pace down. That would have helped me with my expectations of my team Mm. um, and my expectations that God was going to do this through the area of spiritual disciplines, prayer, spending time in the word. That's another Mm. one. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, again, we say these things, we know these things to be true. Like, yeah. But when you get on the field and you're, honestly in war like you've never been in and you don't know how to use the weapon of the word ah. because you've never had a lifestyle of it yeah it's not a routine planting's not gonna like planting's not going to uh hide that planting's going to expose that wow and and so mm. that constant exposure of of not a lifestyle in the word not a lifestyle in 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 prayer then plays out in your team because they're not doing that either, you know? Yeah. And so, so I think those are, there are two areas there. Um, I get going back to the expectation thing. I think for me, um, I would have slowed down and just enjoyed the process a little bit long, a little bit better mm-hmm. as my, as my expectations weren't being met. I think that played out in how I addressed my team. They felt the pressure to move faster themselves, but they were really struggling back here. So I wanted them to be mission. I wanted them to be missionaries. Prayer, prayerful people in the word, reaching people for Jesus, having spiritual conversations. But what I realized was they were in some ways like me is they didn't have the lifestyle of it either. And as I'm trying to learn it, kind of, I'm kind of going at a fast pace. Yeah. They're way back there. 
Yeah. So, so doing it with them is what I'm trying to say. Would you say this to, and, and Noah, feel free to speak in this too. Um, maybe we can all answer this question because I found that, you know, as a practitioner myself, team is a, is a hot topic that never goes out of style. It seems like, a lot of church planters have questions about team, team development, et cetera. Yeah. Would you say, because you I, you just said something that was profound. You're saying, hey, these people moved out, but then I realized they didn't have the lifestyle for it. Would you say to, I, see, to try to recruit people that if they don't have the lifestyle now in their current context, then it might not be wise to even – recruit them or to mm. say, Hey, you know what? You're not, we're not just going to assume you're automatically going to get a lifestyle of prayer and evangelism mm -hmm. and city engagement because you moved here, mm -hmm. but almost looking for people who are already having that lifestyle of what you're looking for, for your church plan context. Does well, that make sense? It, it's almost not uh fair. It's not the right word, but I don't, that's the best word I can think of. It's almost not fair to them because as team members, because we have these expectations on them that they should be at the same level. And one of my level mm -hmm. is, we just gone through assessment. We've gone through trainings. Many of have been in pastoral ministry for a long time. Wow! Like we've been in, you know, in the ed we we've, we've been educated, if you will, with with with, with practice. We're practitioners before we even go. Yeah. Now planting is another whole thing. That's get, don't get me wrong, but these are people. Many of them are moms and dads, really good church members. Right. Love Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're willing yeah, yeah. to sell everything they have to yeah. go across the country, people. Right. You yeah. know, these are amazing people. Right. But they're almost what they understand of Christianity is almost going to church rather than being the church. Mm. And that's not fair mm. to them to, to put that expectation on them because they don't have the lifestyle of it, you know, of being yeah. a missionary yeah. and what it takes to be a missionary. Yeah. And so they go from like, like one day going to church, having their kind of life, willing to give it all away to the next day. We're putting these expectations. You should be a missionary. You should have a, 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 a incredible prayer life. You should be walking with the, with the Lord, hearing from the Holy Spirit, you should, well, I don't know how to have a spiritual conversation, disciple someone, and the majority of the people that come on teams have never done any of that. They really just feel called to you. Yeah. They feel called to you, and so they're looking at you like, "Hey, like, what are we gonna do?" Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then you feel that expectation. Yeah, there goes the expectations again. You know, so you know, I yeah. for me, I, I think, think you can kind of yeah. I think you can kind of look at it using that same, we were talking about military jargon here. You think about it the same way. Right. Um, I've often heard people talk about church planters as the Marines. Um, and I think it's true, especially guys that are going in, in difficult cities, uh, cities that have a history of, of a low population of Christianity and evangelical churches. And they're going to have that higher level of spiritual warfare. You need the Marines. But also, like anytime our military goes in to occupy an area, it's, there's several branches of the military involved. They have different different pieces that they play, but the ones who are most invested often are the Marines. They're going in first. They're going wow. fastest. There's more on their shoulders. Uh, meanwhile, wow. you got people that are saying, "Hey, I'm in the reserves and I want to be involved," and and they are, and and they're learning. They're learning and they're growing. And I think you then mix that with the parable of the talents. Jesus comes to his people and says, Hey, I'm giving you 10. I'm giving you five. I'm giving you one. And they may all be on the same church planting team. And he's going to come back and ask for that investment. And what I think what's hard as a planter sometimes wow. is I've yeah. looked at somebody that maybe is a five or a one that God's given. And I'm like, Hey, why aren't you producing five? Why aren't you producing yeah. 10 like me? Yeah. Well, uh -huh. I'm responsible yeah. to hand Jesus back. What's his, um, to bear the fruit. And they are as yeah. well. That's why I'm at the 12 year mark, man. And I, I just had a conversation recently with the team member, and I'll realize about a year from now, there'll be nobody on my core team that's left except for my wife. And wow, so, so I good. remember thanking God on Sunday, like, Jesus, let me take care of my core team better than ever in this next season, my wife. Because mm -hmm. unless something really, really <laughs> bad happens, wow. she ain't ever leaving me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, but but Man. most of the people that left, wow. they believe for bad reasons. They left because yep. of calling. God had this calling for this part of their life and then moved yep. them on. And he had this calling for this part of my life. That's so good. I love what you're saying. And so I'll, good, this, man. I'll say this last thing for me is, is with all that that we just talked about and what you just said is amazing, Noah, is, is being faithful. You know, faithfulness over time really matters, right? Mm -hmm. So being faithful to walk with these people and realize that they're not a tool to be used wow. for the plant but they're right. actually the gift that God's given you to steward their lives for the kingdom wow. of God. That's a word. And, and, and I think if I look back on it now, 
I wish I would have slowed down. I'm going to get a little teary out here. These are amazing people. Um, many of them might not have been left right. But there's no bitterness in me. If, if anything, I have self-reflection and say, man, if I could have just slowed down and took my time and mm-hmm. realized each of them, God put them, appointed them in that season for that day and gave me the opportunity to steward discipling them and using the avenue of church planning to disciple them to be more like him, wow. to love him, to know him. So that when they were sent out from there, um, that's kingdom, isn't it? You know, get, yeah. Jesus is going to build his church. But if I would just been faithful just to slow down, spend time, um, and um, and just steward what God had given me. Um, again, we have a great church there, and God's used it in great relationships. So I'll tell you all the hard things. But but I'm saying yeah. that, like, just slowing down, don't seeing these people as tools, but really seeing them as, as people, you know, loved by God. Who's, who are gifts to you to help you for certain seasons of your plant too, by the way, you know, just certain yeah. seasons. So, you know, one thing I was going to say with that, and I'd like to do a part two if we could, because I think that there's, we're, we're tapping into certain things that um, are worthy to be, to go deeper into. And you're using that phrase. I wish I would have slowed down. Now I almost want to talk about what are the pressures that, make us feel like we need to run at a specific pace Mm -hmm. that maybe either we're not ready for or our team's not ready for at at, at certain points. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that has to do with timeline. Yeah. You know, the timelines that we develop for our church plant, the timelines that we develop when we, when we get on the field or we move to a context or we say, all right, we're going to do this now. What's our, what's our timeline. So I think it would be dope to do a part two where we talk about shaping and developing a church planting timeline because that has to do with pace. Mm-hmm. That because yeah. if you have a timeline that's like okay, we have we have to hit this marker, yeah. then you start moving fast or mm-hmm. slow or you allow that to kind of drive you. So how about that? How about Noah, we pick it up next week and we uh talk about church plant Let's timeline uh with Pastor Josh again. It'd be it'd be good. Let's hit it. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us for today's We Are Send Network podcast. Noah, if somebody wants to get plugged in to the Send Network, find out more information, tell us what number to text, tell us what website to hit, and we'll log off. Yeah. Just text the words Send Network, Send Network, two words to 888-123, 888-123, or check us out at sendnetwork.com. Hey, as Amen. always, we'll see you next time. We are Send Network. You have been listening to We Are Send Network a resource of the North American Mission Board. For more information about today's podcast and other relevant resources, visit sendnetwork.com.